yeah okay so now let's go to the basic concepts of um, instrumentation so as I, as we had uh, said in a few minutes ago measurement is the assignment of a number to some characteristics of an object and this number is being associated so that it can be compared with other objects other similar objects or event okay but there should be a motivation to do that okay why should there be why should objects be measured why should quantities be measured okay and uh, the simple answer is that they can be done first either for just simple monitoring like if I want to monitor the <coughs> seismographic activity, the earthquake, this thing, you can you can use a seismograph and see whether how much of uh, energy was dissipated in an earthquake. Okay, radioactivity probably needs to be monitored if you are uh, in some nuclear plant. The amount of radioactive activity needs to be known. Okay, so you can for that monitoring purpose you can have a giger counted. Similarly, now it's winter, so you need to measure the temperature and see whether the weather is good enough to go out or not. Okay, or the moisture content to predict whether there will be rain. Okay, so for monitoring purpose, that is the most primary way, the most primary reason that you go for measurements. The second reason would be to analyze and uh, to analyze some quantity and to determine whether there are any dependencies between different quantities this is basically the research purpose for research purpose you can use instruments and you can go for measurement a third and more widespread purpose is uh, the measurement is being used so that it can be controlled so some other variable can be controlled and a manipulating signal can be generated say for example the thermostat in your in the ac in your room okay that would that is that is measuring temperature and depending upon the temperature the uh, the ac setting is determined whether the ac should be turned on or off that can be determined Okay, and similarly, this is an easy ABS break and active bracing, braking system. Okay, so depending upon the amount of um, uh, torque that is in the wheel, okay, the amount of braking torque can be acted so that the uh, passengers in the vehicle don't feel a sudden jerk. Okay, a gradual braking can be done even though a sudden brake is applied. So for that you have to measure that how, much, how fast the wheel is moving and depending upon the motion of the wheel the amount of braking torque is being used okay so for that purpose also to measure the speed of the wheel you need a an instrument a measuring instrument is needed in that case too okay now as we have said that the measurement as as actually requires the association of a number okay and that number is the standard unit the comparison the quantity to which you are comparing your own measurement is a standard unit and of course that you would be not surprised to learn <coughs> that the standard length of length is uh, so standard unit of length is meter mass is kilogram and so on and so forth okay so this table is uh, definitely familiar to anybody Okay. However, still begs the question that what, how do you determine what is one meter, what is one second, and what is one kg? Okay. What does this mean? Okay, we know once we know what is one meter, we can determine whether the length of a an object. Okay, and similarly of with time and mass. However, how, do, how is this one meter determined? Okay. So earlier, we were using artifact bit standard. So there was a, a, a platinum 
rod whose length was 1 meter okay there was a physical rod whose length was 1 meter there was a physical platinum iridium block okay whose uh, weight was or whose mass was 1 kg okay however and and there were other standards there are other physical objects at different locations okay that were calibrated based on the weight of these artifacts now the problem was that as time progressed there was a deviation say for example this is a graph of the deviation that different standard standards had with the primary standard okay so as you say that as time progresses there there is a there is a variation in the way in the in the mass and this may be due to um, not even wear and tear this may be due to even the uh, uh, speck of dust settling on that uh, object okay so there is no guarantee that you end up with the so the there is no guarantee that the standard in geneva which was 1 kg and the standard in in india that is again 1 kg these may be of the same mass at any one point of time okay so so that would mean that the artifact based standards were not very reliable so a different methodology needed to be brought in uh to determine the standard units unambiguously okay and for this purpose i think around 2019 the concept of uh, fundamental constant based standards came into picture okay and this goes thus okay so the standard for matter that is one mole okay that was this number of course there is no physical quantity that needed to be associated with this earlier one mole was taken as the amount the number of carbon atoms in 12 grams of carbon now again you are taking a physical quantity and you need to to know what was one what was 12 grams okay so that dependency was removed by just defining one mole to be this number okay the next quantity to be standardized was the second so it just says that the number of phase transitions that a cesium 133 atom in isotope radioactive isotope of cesium will have or so if, if the number of time the amount of time taken for so many transitions to happen is defined as one second okay so that was another constant okay next to determine what is 1 meter we <coughs> the speed of light was taken into consideration so 1 meter is that amount of the, that that length okay uh, such that the speed of light turns out to be this particular number okay and proceeding further the charge of the electron was used to determine what was 1 ampere okay the planck's constant was used to determine what was 1 kilogram for mass okay and the boltzmann constant was determined to uh, was used to determine what was 1 kelvin the unit of temperature okay and finally for sorry for luminosity okay the luminosity of a standard uh, sodium lamp was used to determine what was one candela okay so proceeding further so that is as far as the unit is concerned now let us we had said that we will first analyze what are the fundamental elements in an instrument so whenever some thing is being measured there is a there will be a sensing element that measures that and it passes that information or that that uh, thing is passed into the instrument 
however mostly the sensed quantity may not be in the most in the most optimal form in which it can be presented to the observer so these variable the variable being sensed needs to be converted appropriately so there will be variable conversion element and there may be a scaling element also a variable manipulation element also and it may happen that physically the measured quantity and the observer may be at a distance so there can be a data transmission element and definitely there should be a data presentation element and if some storage is needed there is a data storage element also of course if the instrument is being used uh, not just for monitoring but for control purpose also this this quantity may be also transmitted towards the uh, to the control system in addition to being displayed to the observer okay now let's take a so and, and uh, in this course we will be looking at all these aspects we will not be concentrating too much of the data transmission part of it okay but the other part of it, the data, the sensing the variable conversion and the data presentation would be looked into okay let's say take a very simple example of a pressure measurement so i want to measure the pressure that is there in this tube okay and so there is a piston based uh, pressure gauge here you know what is happening there is a pressure flowing here and because of the pressure water enters into this area of the piston okay and it pushes the piston up of course when the piston is pushed uh, there is a force that is generated that pushes the piston up and there is another there is a restoring force uh, by the spring and when this balance out uh, this uh, indicator is po pointing at some particular position okay okay the indicator points at some particular position and that is the reading that you have okay so here the piston itself as at the sensing element okay and it also converts the uh, pressure into the force that is being uh, generated and because of the, the force the piston rod moves so it is a data transmission element okay and again it, this force is converted to motion of this rod okay and through the linkages it is manipulated the motion is amplified so a small motion here can be amplified to a larger deflection here okay and finally the data is presented using the scale as the data presentation element and the observer is able to see that okay and we had seen about the classification so as based on the energy the manner in which energy is utilized you can either have active instruments where an external source of energy is being augmented for the measurement purpose so you have a this is an active voltmeter okay so you can measure the output voltage you can measure the input voltage by measuring the by getting the output voltage here okay and uh, it can also be a passive transducer where there is no external source the heat here okay is or is the heat here is going to generate some pressure and that is going to cause some deflection here and that is going to cause some uh, reading to appear so the source the energy source of the measured quantity itself uh, would be the only source of energy in the instrument okay and of course based on whether it is digital or analog the mode of operation you can have analog or digital instruments also okay and you can also have as i mentioned earlier you can also have a null deflection based or <coughs> a or a deflection based or a null based transducer uh, an instrument that is based on indication okay and uh, and and on all these characteristics 
uh, this classification of the instruments in addition to this if you take any particular instrument you have to judge whether that instrument is how good or how bad the instrument is okay so you come to the instrument characteristics now these characteristics can be either static in which case they affect the reading of the instrument they influence the measurement okay but they don't manifest over any individual measurement okay on the other hand the dynamic characteristics uh, uh, describe how an individual measurement would progress okay and it in turn will affect how and when an instrument has to or could be read okay now coming to the static characteristic the most the most popular of the static characteristics is accuracy and precision which generally describes the closeness of measurement to the true value that is accuracy and amongst themselves that is precision so here you have a inaccurate but precise instrument or a precise uh, event and here you have an accurate and precise event okay. the second one is the tolerance so if you have an instrument or let us say if you have a uh, if an instrument says that the current is say 2 amp plus or minus 0.2 amp or 0 0.02 amp so this is the tolerance so i can expect the actual reading to be some value around the individual reading this range is the tolerance of the instrument okay and however the instrument there will be minimum value of the measured quantity to the maximum value of measured quantity that can be sensed by the instrument so the range of the instrument will give the is the range or span is these two values the minimum and maximum values that describe the range and span and if you look at this instrument in this uh, indicated instrument you will see that when the pointer it has, is at any arbitrary uh, position it may not be easy to determine what is the actual uh, current or voltage okay so the smallest change in reading that can be registered okay is called as the resolution of the instrument so if you have an instrument that can read say 1 amp and then next it can read only 1.1 amp and in between there is no reading then the resolution is 0.1 amp in this case okay and the resolution is generally in most of the instrument the resolution is a constant but it can't be taken for granted you can have an instrument where the resolution changes with the uh, position of the scale okay let's again go back here also okay. here if you look at this part of the reading okay so between 0 and 1 there are 5 indications so something like 0 0.2 okay so the threshold is the minimum reading so and if the reading was less than 0 0.2 then if the actual uh, quantity was less than 0 0.2 you would not have been able to determine any reading so the threshold is the minimum signal that is required to induce a the reading okay of course if you have an instrument and if you want if you want to rely on the instrument you should be sure that it gives the same reading if the same quantity is being measured okay so the variation in the measured value when repeatedly uh, reading the same measurement is called as repeatability of the instrument and you of course you want high repeatability for reliability of the instrument okay and uh, as i said earlier it may not be it can it can't be taken for granted that the resolution of the instrument is the same okay here you can see that there is no uh, indication between 0 and 10 ok 
okay there are four indications so yeah there are five indications between 10 and 20 and so on also okay and the other thing to see is that the angle that is subtended for this 20 20 20 if i if you subdivide okay the amount of deflection that is required to register 20 amp okay and the change of deflection from 20 to 40 amp they are different okay so so if i plot the current versus the deflection theta this will not be a linear graph okay so the linearity of the instrument is also something that is a desirable property but it may not be a property that can be expected from all instruments particularly current measuring instruments okay so the closeness of the input to output relationship to a linear function is called as linearity of the instrument this is another desirable property but in many instruments you have to call, you have to sort of compromise with the linearity because it may not be very easy to bring in linearity into the reading of the instrument okay the other one is the sensitivity of sensitivity of the instrument okay that is changing in indication with change in input okay so again in the if you take the case of the ammeter here the ammeter is is quite sensitive in this range and insensitive in this range so the a 20 amp current is required let us say to have a 15 degree deflection here okay but a change in 20 amp okay say from 20 to 40 is going to bring in so much deflection okay so so the sensitivity of the instrument is this delta theta by delta i if of course if you are taking the example of the ammeter that was here okay note that these three quantities seem to be very similar but they are not the same okay this is delta theta by delta i if we are talking about the ammeter okay this the threshold is the minimum possible reading okay and the resolution okay is the minimum difference between two indicated readings indications you can say not even indicated readings okay so the sensitivity even even if the scale doesn't have any indications then you can still talk about sensitivity but you can't talk, talk about threshold or resolution of an instrument in that case okay so this these were how good the instrument is okay and you can have the zero bias and sensitivity drift to judge how bad an instrument is or, or how different a disturbance or other effects can affect the reading of the instrument okay so one the zero bias is what is the reading that is indicated when there is no input okay when there is no input whatever is the reading that is the zero bias and if the uh, what do you say if the if the reading changes or if the sensitivity changes from the quantity it was designed for or it was from the quantity that the indications say it is then you say there is a sensitivity detail, sensitivity detect okay okay in addition uh, certain type of instrument like a spring balance okay they may not restore back to, the, to their original position as soon as the weight is removed of it of it so that would that that may so if you if you load 
then slowly you get this the increase the readings increase along this path but when you unload it there the readings are going by this path okay which means there is non conformity between the loading curve and the unloading curve or the variable increasing curve and the variable decreasing curve this of course will cause hysteresis and is as if the sensor has a memory okay of what was measured earlier rather than and also so it it take the, the reading is indicative what was there and what is there so this is not a desirable property because you don't you your current reading should depend upon the current value rather than what was the previous value or what was the value a few minutes ago okay so your instrument should also be designed in a manner such that the hysteresis effect is minimized however that is again you you can't say that that can be eliminated completely okay there may be certain instruments where you have a dead space that is there should be a there, there is a zero reading over a small range however this dead space is usually quite small okay Uh, this may be due to if you to the mechanical system there may be stiction or similar effects and because of that you can have zero reading even when the quantity being measured is non zero okay and going further the errors all these errors that can be they can be categorized into two different categories one is the systemic errors which are associated with the particular instrument or the technique that is being used to measure okay and they always cause a bias either there be a sensitivity drift or a zero drift that are in one particular direction okay and of course by recalibrating the instrument again this systemic errors can be eliminated the other Uh, type of error is a random error they are unbiased they are unpredictable and since they are unpredictable okay there is no sure shot way of eliminating but there can be minimized they can be minimized to a large extent simply by averaging so you can you can control this and you can sort of el almost eliminate all this almost eliminate but not completely eliminate and be sure that there is no error okay by averaging out re repeated measurements you can uh, counter random errors okay so those those were the static characteristics now coming to the dynamic characteristics of the instrument the dynamic characteristics are those properties of the instrument or how the instrument behaves during one measurement okay so you can take the instrument as some system some block okay where you have the reading on one side and the measurement on the other side okay how it reacts to a sudden change in measurement or some change in measurement okay so the reading how it reacts to it is what we want to capture in the model where this qi is the measurement and qo is the reading okay of course the most simplest of the measurements are zero order uh, mathematical models like a potentiometer so if you have a potentiometer and if you have voltage source here okay the voltage source the voltage at across this voltmeter okay would be just would, would respond instantaneously so the so if you have a resistance here the voltage across the resistance changes instantaneously as a position of changes instantaneously as as a position changes okay so if you are using a potentiometer to measure displacement then it's a zero order instrument because the output the voltage across the potentiometer is going to change instantaneously with the change in position okay a first order instrument like a thermometer okay does not give an instantaneous reading the instrument has a time constant the response is relatively sluggish 
okay however there are no oscillations so let us say that you have a thermometer which you dip in a hot bath so and if you take the reading of the thermometer if you start taking the reading of this thermometer uh, right from the start you would see a graph that looks like this okay now here you see that now it is obvious that as soon as you you as soon as you dip if you take a reading then you would not you would not get the correct reading you wanted a reading tf but you will have a reading t and as time progresses this the reading on the thermometer is going to increase and after some time let us say tau which is a time constant of the, of the instrument you will be able to be sure that the indicated reading is close to what the actual reading of this um, hot water is okay and after a first order system you can have a second order system and this is typically those system where there is where you have a restoring force like a spring okay and this is also quite let us say if you have a weighing machine so there is a restoring force there is a spring here okay and you are trying to measure the amount of mm, compression that is there when a weight is pressed so if a weight is suddenly pressed this spring is going to cause some oscillations okay the restoring spring is going to cause some oscillations and those type of instruments are the second order instruments where of course the there is a second order term here second derivative term here okay and of course when you have the, the few of the dynamic characteristics that are of importance are the speed of the response that is the rise time which is the time taken from here to here so the time taken for the first um, the quantity to rise the reading to rise okay the speed at which this rises can be characterized by the time taken for this rise okay that is the speed of the response however if it's an oscillating if it's a second order instrument and there are oscillations this would mean that uh, it the measurement is not yet done it has to settle down okay and once it settles to within some error band we can say that the instrument is the reading can be taken and the time taken for that to happen the response time is how quickly it settles to the final value okay and of course there may be cases where it takes some time for the instrument to even start to respond to react to the change in measurement even so that is a dead time that is another characteristic dead time delay or lag different uh names for the same thing okay and if you have an input quantity that uh is not constant that is a varying quantity then the ability to reproduce the input shape without distraction uh, without distortion is called as the ferility of the instrument okay it has seen then in uh, many electronic instruments also let us say if you have a sine wave okay and you are passing it the sine wave through some electronic circuit okay and trying to and trying to see the output of the circuit okay and these electronic circuit theoretically should just scale the sine wave so at low frequency you get another sine wave but as the frequency increases some of the nonlinear properties of the circuits will start to dominate and you get a quantity that may be triangle that may look as triangular so so the fidelity of the circuit is uh, fidelity of the instrument is now compromised because it doesn't uh, work so well at high frequencies of course so fidelity is also one of the properties that depending upon the frequency range or the region of operation of the instrument it can change so in whichever region you want to use the instrument you have to ensure that the instrument is of high fidelity okay and i hope that if you have taken ell225 you would have seen 
how these how the <coughs> if you have a second order system how these parameters a0 a1 a2 they correspond to the dynamic characteristics okay so that's why i'm not going to get into that thing okay and uh, finally you can uh, go through the first second chapters of the me measurement instrumentation book by morris and langari okay and chapter 2 of measurement systems by doblet to cover these same topics okay okay with that we come to the end of this lecture thank you